Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, Teacher Liz, here, your host once more for this episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It's Monday, so of course I have new observances, history lessons, animals and plants to see, a new place to explore, and of course some Spanish words to learn. And be sure you're logging in for the Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Educational Team. So let's not delay anymore. Let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Hey Discovery Learners, it's Substitute Teacher Andrew again, bringing you a whole new list of observances for today. Our first observance is National Garden Meditation Day. National Garden Meditation Day is celebrated annually on May 3rd. It encourages everyone to take time for oneself and relax. Working in the garden, tending to the plants and flowers, or resting quietly on a bench on a beautiful day in the garden and any form of meditation can be both restorative to the soul and to the body. Meditation and gardening offer many benefits. When you couple it with outdoor peace of a garden, you also get the enjoyment and benefits that nature has to offer too, like fresh air. You also get audio therapy with the beautiful sounds of nature, from birds chirping to the wind blowing through the trees. You also get vitamin D, a natural dose though limited dose, through the sun keeps the body healthy and strong. It also improves sleep, rest better by communicating with nature. Whether you spend time pulling weeds or focusing your thoughts among the flowers, sleep will come more easily. It also eases anxiety. Worries begin to evaporate as our muscles relax and we take a deeper and slower breath. The exercise of the garden also allows us to forget about our worldly concerns for a short while. So how do you intend on observing Garden Meditation Day? Let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance is National Two Different Colored Shoes Day. Each year on May 3rd, National Two Different Colored Shoe Day encourages us to celebrate our uniqueness and put it on display. This day stands out from the other 364 days of the year where you wear two different colored shoes and see where they take you. You may discover you walk a different beat, or perhaps the road less traveled. Maybe you'll just see the world a little differently. One foot might ache more than the other. The left foot might be a little more colorful too. Is one a dressy snazzer, or maybe the other one's a comfy tennis shoe? Either way, it helps demonstrate our differences, and they should be celebrated, not mocked. Is your left foot a little bit more country? Is your right foot a little more rock and roll? We'll put it on display on National Two Different Colored Shoe Day. What kind of shoes will you be putting on your feet today? Let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance is National Chocolate Custard Day. National Chocolate Custard Day on May 3rd celebrates a delicious, pudding-like dessert enjoyed by many. Pastry chefs and home cooks alike make custards by blending eggs with milk and cream and heating the mixture either on a stove or in an oven. Since custards come in a variety of consistencies, you can choose one that best suits your dessert preference. For example, they range from a thin liquid-like cream to a firm cream like creme brulee. Custard is also a very versatile dessert. When it's paired with pastries and baked goods, Custard can be layered in pipe. It also can be the main filling of a pie or a tart. It can be substituted for a frosting or baked between layers of pound cake or create a delightful parfait with custard. Angel food cake, you can pipe custard into dainty little cakes or add a dollop of whipped cream and sprinkles for flair. While chocolate custards are delicious in their own way, they also are used to fill eclairs, cream puffs, and donuts too. Let us know in the comment section below what favorite custard dish you have. Our last observance is another tasty one, National Raspberry Popover Day. National Raspberry Popover Day on May 3rd each year recognizes a dish similar to Yorkshire pudding. The day is also referred to as National Raspberry Tart Day. Popovers earn their name by their characteristics of popping over the edge of the pan they're baked in. They can be enjoyed in both sweet and savory combinations. The primary ingredient in popovers are flour, eggs, milk, butter, salt, and more butter. Raspberries make popovers even sweeter. Whether they're sweet or savory, most people enjoy popovers at breakfast time. And believe it or not, National Raspberry Popover Day is the second popover holiday on the calendar. In March, we can celebrate National Blueberry Popover Day. 
or you can really get into the spirit of the observance and pause the video right here and take a look at the recipe above and enjoy some raspberry popovers of your very own. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today in 1944, Going My Way, directed by Leo McCary, starring Bing Crosby, premieres in New York City. Going My Way is a 1944 American musical comedy drama film directed by Leo McCary and starring Bing Crosby and Barry Fitzgerald, written by Frank Butler and Frank Cavett, based on a story by McCary. The film is about a young priest taking over a parish from an established old veteran. Crosby sings five songs, and other songs performed on screen by the Metropolitan Opera star Mezzo Soprano Ray Stevens and the Robert Mitchell Voice Choir. Going My Way was followed the next year by a sequel, The Bells of St. Mary's. Going My Way was the highest grossing picture of 1944 and was nominated for 10 Academy Awards, winning 7, including Best Picture. Its success helped make movie exhibitors choose Crosby as the biggest box office draw of the year, a record he would hold for the remainder of the 1940s. After World War II, Crosby and McCary even presented a copy of the film to the Pope at the Vatican. Today, in 1960, the Anne Frank House opens in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. The Anne Frank House is a writer's house and biographical museum dedicated to Jewish wartime diarist Anne Frank. The building is located on the canal called the Prinsengrasch, close to Westerkirk in central Amsterdam in the Netherlands. During World War II, Anne Frank hid from Nazi persecution with her family and four other people in hidden rooms at the rear of the 17th century canal house. Known as a secret annex, she did not survive the war, but her wartime diary was published in 1947. Ten years later, the Anne Frank Foundation was established to protect the property from developers who wanted to demolish the block. The museum opened on May 3, 1960. It preserves the hiding place as a permanent exhibition on the life of the times of Anne Frank and has an exhibition space about all forms of prosecution and discrimination. In 2013 and 2014, the museum had 1.2 million visitors and was the third most visited museum in the Netherlands. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Bing Crosby, born May 3rd, 1903 in Tacoma, Washington. This American bass baritone singer and actor who released White Christmas in 1954 also sold more than half a billion records. Wow. Before he was famous, working as a property boy at an auditorium, he was able to see all the famous performers of his day. He joined the band in 1923 with some high school boys. He unfortunately passed away October 14th of 1977 at the age of 74. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about him is his album, Being Scenes, was certified two times platinum. And it is also said that he influenced Frank Sinatra. Happy birthday, Bean Crosby! Our next notable figure born today is James Brown. Born May 3, 1933 in Barnwell, South Carolina. This American funky soul singer who gained his fame for his anthem, I Got You, I Feel Good, and Rolling Stone Magazine ranked him 7th on their list of 100 greatest artists of all time. Before he was famous, he was a gospel singer. He too unfortunately passed away December 25th of 2006 at the age of 73. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about him is, he was known as the Godfather of Soul, and he became a social voice with his 1968 hit, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. Happy birthday, James Brown. Another one of our notable figures born today is Frankie Valli. 
Born May 3rd of 1934 in New York, New Jersey. This American frontman with the Four Seasons whose hits include Big Girls, Don't Cry, and Sherry. He was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the Four Seasons. Before he was famous, he worked as a barber until his singing career was able to support him. He had 29 top 40 hits with the Four Seasons and 9 more as a solo artist. Wow, I liked Frankie Valli's songs. He turns 87 years old today. Happy birthday, Frankie Valli. The next little figure born today is Bruce Hall. Born May 3rd, 1953 in Champaign, Illinois. This longtime bass guitarist for the rock band REO Speedwagon, who has wrote and sang lead for REO songs such as Back on the Road Again, The Girl with the Heart of Gold, After Tonight, and Born to Love You, amongst others. Before he was famous, he joined REO Speedwagon in 1977 as a replacement for Greg Philbin. Wow, he turned 68 years old today. Happy birthday, Bruce Hall. And our last notable figure born today is Christina Hendricks. Born May 3rd of 1975 in Knoxville, Tennessee. This American actress is best known for playing Joan Harris on AMC series Mad Men. She has also appeared in such films as Drive, Detachment, and Life as We Know It. Before she was famous, she worked as a model and guest starred on various television series. She may be a redhead, but she's actually a natural blonde. But she started dyeing her hair red after seeing Anne of Green Gables at the age of 10. She turned 46 years old today. Happy birthday, Christina Hendricks. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along as we take a journey to the place of the week. This week we are traveling to Mexico. That's right, our neighbor to the south. And you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Well, that's the Mexican National Anthem. As you go ahead and give that a listen, let's learn a little more about the Mexican flag. This nation's flag is vertically striped green, white, and red, with a central coat of arms featuring an eagle, a cactus, and a serpent on the white stripe. The initial design of the flag may have been influenced by the French tricolor flag, but the colors were distinctively Mexican. Green symbolizes independence, white is for the Roman Catholic religion, and red is for the Union or the three guarantees that they have with Spain. The eagle coat of arms, however, is a bit tricky to explain. This symbol, or coat of arms, recognizes the Aztec heritage of Mexico. According to Aztec legend, the gods told the Aztec people to build their capital where they saw an eagle. They did see an eagle, on a cactus, in the middle of a lake devouring a serpent. That's where they decided to build their city, thus placing it on their flag. Pretty interesting. The current iteration of the Mexican flag has been in use since September 17, 1968. Mexico is located in North America, sharing a common border throughout its northern extent with the United States. To the north, bounded to the west and south by the Pacific Ocean, to the east by the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, and to the southeast by Guatemala and Belize. Mexico is actually the third largest country in Latin America, after Brazil and Argentina. The official name for Mexico is Estados Unidos Mexicanos, which means United Mexican States. Its form of government is a federal republic with two legislative houses the Senate, and the Chamber of Deputies. Its head of government is a president, and its capital is Mexico City. The official language for Mexico is Spanish, and the most popular religion is Catholicism. Mexico's main monetary unit is 
the Mexican peso. 20 Mexican pesos equals 1 US dollar. The current population for Mexico is 126,424,000 people. Mexico also has a total area of 758,450 square miles. And again, as a quick reminder, Mexico is one of the third largest countries in Latin America after Brazil and Argentina. Mexico is actually 1.3 times bigger than the U.S. state of Alaska. The main exports of Mexico are cars, Nexus computers, vehicle parts, delivery trucks, and crude petroleum. Mexico is actually the ninth largest export economy in the world. Some of the largest money-making industries in Mexico are automobile manufacturing, food and beverages, tobacco, iron and steel, and last on the list is tourism. Wow, Mexico sounds like a fascinating country. And there's lots to learn about our neighbors to the south. So be sure you stay tuned to every episode of Ability to Learn this week as we teach you more about Mexico. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the mayfly. The mayfly, also known as the shadefly, is an aquatic insect that also belongs to the same family as dragonflies and damselflies. There are 2,500 species of mayfly that can be found all over the world. Mayflies are an ancient group of insects that appeared on the planet 350 million years ago, before the dinosaurs. They can be found under rocks, decaying plants, and sediments in the rivers and streams and ponds or lakes. The major threat to the mayflies in the wild are habitat loss, pollution, climate change, and several species of mayfly are actually considered threatened or endangered. The mayfly can reach up to an inch in length. Most species are much smaller though. Most species of mayfly are green colored. The mayfly has a large compound eye, short flexible antennas, elongated narrow bodies, two or three long tails, and two pairs of wings. The first pair of wings are much larger than the second pair. These wings kept upright above the body when the others aren't being used. Mayflies consume algae during the larval stage. Adults do not have functional mouths and they don't eat. Mayflies are an important source of food for trout, bass, catfish, frogs, newts, and other birds. Mayflies undergo three developmental stages, egg, larva, and adult. The female mayfly lays thousands of eggs on the surface of the water. They sink to the bottom and usually hatch about a month to a month and a half later. The larval stage may last a few months or up to three years, and it takes place under the water. The larvae have elongated, slightly flattened cylindrical bodies and robust legs covered with hairs, bristles, or spines. They have gills that they use for breathing. Adult mayflies emerge from the ponds, lakes, and streams from spring to autumn. Only a few species hatch during May. Mayflies are best known for their extremely short lifespan. Adult flies live for a few minutes to a few days. Their only purpose is to reproduce and they die soon after that. Mayflies are indicators of pollution of the water. They can only survive in clean water. Mayflies are often used for models for creation of artificial flies for fly fishing. I'd like to say that's pretty interesting, but the mayflies kind of creep me out. Let us know in the comment section below if you've ever seen mayflies swarming around the pool or maybe while you're feeding the ducks by a pond or a lake. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the honeysuckle. The honeysuckle is a semi-evergreen or deciduous plant that belongs to the honeysuckle family. There's around 200 species of honeysuckle that can be found in Europe, Asia, and North and South America. Honeysuckle grows on moist, well-drained soil in areas that provide enough sun. Some species of honeysuckle are classified as invasive because they often invade landscapes and prevent growth of native species of plants. 
people cultivate the honeysuckle in ornamental purposes and as they are a source of beautiful flowers used in floral arrangements. Honeysuckle can grow in the form of a shrub or a vine. Shrubs usually grow from 20 to 30 feet, while the vines can climb from 30 to 80 feet in height. The honeysuckle produces small, oval leaves that can be dark green or bluish green. Leaves are oppositely arranged to the branches. Honeysuckle produces trumpet-shaped flowers arranged in pairs. These flowers can be white, pastel yellow, orange, red, or pink. They have a strong sweet aroma that is especially prominent during the night. Honeysuckle can bloom during the spring, summer, or fall, depending upon the species. Flowers are filled with nectar which attracts hummingbirds and butterflies. It's responsible for the pollination of this plant. The color of the flowers changes from white to yellow after successful pollination. The fruit of the honeysuckle is roundish or elongated berries. The fruit can be red, black, or blue in color. The berries do contain a few seeds. People can safely consume the flowers and nectars of the honeysuckle, but they should avoid berries because they contain substances that induce nausea and vomiting. Honeysuckle berries aren't poisonous for bears, birds, and other forest animals. Not so much for people. The leaves of the honeysuckle are also edible, and they can be consumed as leafy vegetables. The berries of the honeysuckle were used as a source of dyes in the past. The fibrous stems of the honeysuckle were used in the manufacture of textile. The flower of the honeysuckle can be used as toys for cats because they attract cats with their strong scent. During the Victorian era, Englishmen often planted honeysuckle in front of their houses to keep evil spirits and witches away. People used to believe that the flower of the honeysuckle tucked under a pillow ensured pleasant dreams. This old belief is still popular and the flowers of the honeysuckle are used today in the manufacture of herbal pillows. Honeysuckle is used in the treatment of fever, influenza, rashes, skin infections, and various inflammations of the body today. Because it contains substances that prevent inflammation, kill bacteria, and induce sedation, the flower of the honeysuckle is also used in the cosmetology industry. They manufacture various beauty products and perfumes. The honeysuckle is a perennial plant that can survive around 20 years in the wild. Wow, that's super interesting. I grew up around honeysuckle and I used to enjoy them during the summertime. Let us know in the comment section below if you're familiar with the honeysuckle or if you've heard about it before. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Today's word is actually a Spanish word used in the English language. That word is Sierra, spelled S-I-E-R-R-A. -R -R it's a noun. It means a long, jagged mountain chain. Sierra. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is meditating. It's a verb. It means to think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time, in silence or with an aid of chanting, for religious or spiritual purposes, or as a method of relaxation. Meditating. Hola, Discovery Learners. So yo, tu maestra Liz. Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher Liz. And, ese es tu español, la palabra de la semana. What that means is, here's your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es, madre. 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 Which means, mother or mom. Madre. Mom. Madre. Mom. Another way to say mom in Spanish is mamá. You can also use mamá in a phrase. Te quiero mamá. Te quiero mamá. Which means, I love you mom. Te quiero mamá. I love you mom. Te quiero mamá. I love you mom. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying Te quiero mamá, which means I love you mom. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. 
Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week right here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners! Sunday is Mother's Day, which means I've whipped up a list of Mother's Day classics to watch this week. First up on the marquee is Brave. This PG film from 2012 is a family adventure film. It has a 1 hour and 40 minute runtime. It stars Kelly McDonald as Murda, and is available on Disney+. Up next is Steel Magnolias. This film is rated PG. It comes all the way back from 1989. It's a drama comedy with a 2 hour and 3 minute runtime. It stars Sally Field, Julie Roberts, and Dolly Parton, and is available on Hulu. That brings us to The Blind Side. This film is rated PG-13. It's from 2009, and it's a sports drama. It has a 2 hour and 9 minute runtime and stars Sandra Bullock and Tim McGraw, and can be found on Hulu. Let's take a deeper look at this cinematic work of art. This week's cinematic work of art is Stepmom. This film is rated PG-13. It was filmed in 1998 and is a family drama. It has a 2 hour and 5 minute runtime and is available on Hulu. It was directed by Chris Columbus and stars Julia Roberts, Susan Sarandon, and Ed Harris. And the music is by John Williams. Stepmom. This is a wonderful film about a family and the struggles of being a mom and assuming the role of mother as well. This beautiful character study brings you into a world of one family trying to come together, despite their family now being blended. The movie feels very 90s, but the nostalgia only adds to the value of the film as it helps envelop you in the story, and the always amazing music by John Williams really helps to set the tone, and it only enhances the drama, the laughs, and the love in the film, making it a cinematic work of art. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know that it's been exactly one year since the educational team from Discovery Day program started the Ability to Learn channel on YouTube? Yeah, one year. It's true. Starting mid-March of year 2020, Discovery Day program closes doors due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But it wasn't until the end of April when JR proposed a online program, Ability to Learn, as a way to reach out to the program participants of Discovery. Spearheaded by JR and the educational team, our teachers at the time, Ian Eskren, Emily Leach, Liz Weir, Karina Beck, and Joe Vu, together started to produce daily content on YouTube readily and easily accessible to all of our program participants. The first video was produced, filmed, and hosted by JR on April 22, 2020. Although the first video was published April 22, the Ability to Learn channel wasn't established until May 1, 2020. Soon thereafter, the other teachers joined in on making daily content for Ability to Learn. As time progressed, iPads were made available for our program participants, making it easier for them to access the daily show on YouTube. So yeah, it's been one year since we started Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. Pretty interesting, huh? Aw, we all know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time. <laughs>